while Alice is uh, setting it up, I wanted to give you a little bit of a framework um, <clears throat> from where I'm coming from. Otherwise, I might have to issue a disclaimer that the, that the uh, uh, opinions expressed are not necessarily those of management. <laughs> Um, I'm a, I'm a uh, director of uh, health services, which includes uh, uh, behavioral health in Modoc County. Um, in our behavioral heart health division, um, for the whole division, we have nine um, direct service staff and nine um, support staff. And um, most of those are not trained clinical professionals. I have a psychologist, a psych nurse practitioner, and a new MSW. The rest of them are peers or support people. Over 50% of my staff are uh, former or current consumers and family members, <clears throat> close to 60 or higher. Um, and I am, a, I am a family member. So when you look at a small county of about 10,000 people in the extreme northeast corner of California, bordering uh, Nevada and Oregon, where it's three miles or three hours to the nearest city of Reading or Reno, which means out-of-state travel, no inpatient facilities. Our hospitalizations have to be transported to Sacramento or beyond. Um, most of our people that are in IMDs and some of them in SNFs are three to seven hours, some of them in Fresno. My staff treat, the, do the outpatient um, services and they also get up at night and do hospitalizations because they take rotating call. We're the only providers of behavioral health services in the county currently. Um, so that's what we face. So, you know, I, I've, I've looked at this and I said, I've got to be really pragmatic about this. It doesn't do any good to be jealous of Debbie when she has all of, her, all of, these, all of these IT people to write reports and do it and they can have all of this. And I'm saying, I love data. I, I used to teach research, you know, and programming Val. But it isn't going to work. And if we look to the future where 50%, um, if Ron is right, 50% or more will be peer providers. You know, we've got an issue here. And so I look at it and say, I, I, I get angry, I get frustrated. And I'm, I'm saying, you know, I can wait. And maybe, if I'm really lucky in my professional lifetime, we will come up with some solutions. Or I can, you know, roll up my sleeves and say, what can I do to be a part of the solution of the problem? So when I make radical comments sometimes, maybe you can put it in that context and forgive me. <laughs> um, but I am so ready to be able to have quality improvement data um, that's simple and easy to use, that's transferable. Um, and, and I look at it and say, you know, when we get to underlying all this unending conversation and angst around, account, you know, we need to be accountable and we need to demonstrate outcomes, and I totally agree. Um, but underlying that, I think, is really the common goal that um, we need to provide, and we want to provide and or receive um, I'm going to see if I can get this to go. We want to provide and or receive quality behavioral health services. We want to know that we're making a difference. And, um, and so, you know, I'd like to focus on what I have seen at, for, for us in, in, in small county, the major barriers. But the more I sit on evaluation committees and other things, I don't think our problem is unique to small counties, quite frankly. I think it's a major system issue. So the first uh, barrier that I want to address in the few minutes I have um, is the failure to use a quality improvement approach. Um, and for me, that means that in the here and now, I need to test what I'm doing or what we're doing 
and it needs to have meaning not only to the clinician that's providing the service to the person in front of them at that moment in time, it also is, I believe, a moral and ethical imperative that it has meaning to the person that we're serving. Because that's really what it's about. You know, at that moment in time, it's the person that's in front of me as a clinician. And does the data have use to them? And then, ideally, and I think of a necessity, that data needs to be able to filter up through the system to the macro level to do statewide outcomes. If it isn't, it's redundant, it's complicated, it's very costly. I mean, I, could, I, I shy away from actually running the numbers of how much of my resources that I have in my county go to supporting the system, billing the services, and to quality improvement outcome attempts, which if I were going to grade myself in my class in the past, I would have given us an F. You know, I, I, I'm being real candid here, but we have not done a good job, and we have not done a good job of working together, and that's why I think we face the risk and the threats that we do now. I, I think we either need to put up or shut up, and we need to figure out a way to, to make this work out. Um, so the second thing that we've addressed an, a lot is uh, lack of standardized measures to understand both the quality of the current services that we've provided and the impact of the changes we make to provide services and the outcomes for our clients. And then underlying it all is, is if we don't have um, a usable tool that will um, uh, co collect our data, will help us analyze it in, in simple ways, and aggregate it and report it at all systems level, we're not going to get the jo job done. I, I, I've been so extreme as to say it's kind of like handling, handing a brain surgeon an ax and telling him to perform surgery. That's how we've been going about it, quite frankly. I mean, it just isn't working for us in most instances. And if it does work for us in our local county, we're not very good at transferring it to each other and aggregating it because we don't have a, a way to, to do that. So I wanted to talk a little bit about the different purposes of measurement. 